If you've ever wondered if it was actually possible to launch nuclear missiles simply by whistling into a telephone, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's do an OSC review. Thank you again for joining me. There's a lot of information to go over today, so let's just jump right into it. The OSCE is the Offensive Security Certified Expert. It is considered the Big Brother certification to the OSCP, and it is offered under Offensive Security's Cracking the Perimeter course. To even get started on your OSCE journey, you will be required to pass a registration challenge. From there, you will get a key for the payment form, and it'll be business as usual from there on out. As far as the course itself, many people have the mistaken belief that OSCE is a certification based off of binary exploitation, but I can assure you from my own personal experience, this is not a binary exploitation course. So. Please get that idea out of your head. This is very much a penetration testing course. Keep in mind it focuses on one specific aspect of penetration testing, where it's focusing on getting around exploit mitigations, security configurations, and other types of things that are put in place to restrict an attack. As far as the course itself, similar to penetration testing with Kali, the course comes with a PDF and a set of videos, but in my experience, these materials, although good in their own right, will not prepare you for the exam. So just keep that in mind. Your ability to pass the exam is going to depend on how well you can prepare for the course in general. As for what the course goes over, it covers topics such as advanced cross-site scripting, advanced local file inclusion, some intermediate and non-vanilla buffer overflows along with some very basic exploit mitigations and how to get around them such as ASLR, as well as a small section on bypassing Cisco access control lists. In addition to that, there's also a section on backdooring executables and bypassing antivirus signatures. So in general, that's what the Cracking the Perimeter course is about. So keep in mind this exam is two days long. At the end of the two days, you'll also have 24 hours to complete your exam report. So make sure you're getting plenty of rest the night before and make sure you're getting plenty of rest at the end of the first day. In addition, make sure that taking plenty of breaks, eating snacks, just make sure that while you're going through the exam, you don't panic. You just keep a clear head and stay focused on the things that you're supposed to be doing. But with that being said, let's get into some additional resources that I think will be beneficial for you. First and foremost, the OSCE prep guide by Tulpa Security was the biggest roadmap that I used to prepare for the course. Within his roadmap, he goes over making sure that you understand x86 assembly, getting familiar with various debuggers, understanding egg hunters, overriding structured exception handlers, getting familiar with fuzzers, in addition to getting more advanced with topics like bypassing ASLR and restricted character sets. In addition to the Tulpa Security blog, you may also find Abachi's OSE study plan beneficial for you. I did not personally go over this, but I've heard many great things about it, and I figured I would throw this one out there. Understanding x86 assembly is going to be crucial for you as you're going through this course. I have gone through SLAE by Pentester Academy. I had a rudimentary understanding of assembly before going into the course, so it didn't take me a whole lot of time to get more familiar with assembly, but the SLAE course by Pentester Academy definitely bridged a lot of gaps for me. So if you have maybe just an okay understanding of assembly, or if you're not familiar with assembly at all, get signed up for this course and you should have all of the tools and skill sets that you'll need to be successful going through cracking the perimeter. In addition to SLAE, some blogs that I thought were extremely helpful, especially for the preparation side, is going through Ombre's blog write-ups for what he did to prepare for OSCE, as well as Captain Milo. And I will leave links for both of these blogs in the description below. These were invaluable resources to me. They really helped me understand what exactly I was doing, the, the goals that I was supposed to be setting for different exploitation tasks, and getting more familiar with the buggers so definitely absolutely check out ombre and captain milo there's a module within the cracking the perimeter course that is particularly difficult there's a lot of information in this video from defcon that in my opinion wasn't covered to the same extent in the pdf or the course videos so absolutely give this video a watch 
In addition to that, you'll want to get really familiar with how to exploit buffer overflows. And there isn't a single thing that I can think of that's better for that learning objective than Vuln Server. Once you have an environment set up, you'll want to get a copy of Vuln Server. And what I would recommend is going over each and every single command within Vuln Server in as many different ways as you possibly can. Another resource that I found helpful, especially on finding different opcodes and understanding the different specifics of x86 instructions, was c9x.me. And this is more or less a wiki of a bunch of different x86 instructions. So just as a quick example, we'll check out the different opcodes for jump instructions, what their relative offsets are, and what the intended purpose of that specific opcode does. So this is a absolutely crucial resource that I found extremely helpful, and I think it'll be helpful to you as well. In later stages of the course, you'll get into more advanced topics like writing ASCII-specific shellcode, in which case you'll want to know different instructions that are ASCII-friendly. And the ASCII shellcode wiki on NetSec will absolutely give you all of the information that you'll need. In addition to that, I would also recommend looking at the file inclusion and cross-site scripting wikis for Payloads All The Things. These cover more specific and more detailed techniques on how to use local file inclusion and cross-site scripting to achieve more deeper exploitation goals like RCE, so absolutely give these a look over. I never personally used Bufuzz when I was going through the course, but a lot of online friends of mine had a lot of praise to say about it. If you would like to use Bufuzz, you can simply run pip install Bufuzz. Bufuzz is a more intelligent version of the Sully fuzzing framework, which was a more intelligent version of the Spike fuzzing framework. So if you're not a fan of Spike or Sully, you may want to give Bufuzz a try. As far as my own personal OSC journey, I finished my OSCP in August of 2019, and after that I didn't really know what I wanted to do. The OSCP was a goal that I had set for myself for a very long time, and you know, it's kind of like a dog chasing a car, right? What does the dog do when it actually catches the car? So that's the situation that I found myself in. So in my mind, anyone that I ever heard of that had the OSCE certification was automatically a god in my mind. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to see for myself if I had what it took to become an OSCE. I spent a couple of months doing all of the preparation work uh, suggested by Tulpa and Ombre and Captain Milo. Went through as many phone server commands as I could. I did the SLE course by Pentester Academy, and by the time I was actually in the course in December, I was going through all of the course materials, and I was like, wow, this is a lot easier than I thought it was. And then came time for my exam in February. So the first day of the exam, I didn't accomplish any of the objectives, and by the end of the first day, I was like, oh my god, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. What am I going to do? So I went out with some friends later that night, came back the next day with at least a more relaxed mindset, and I was able to pass on the very first try. I think what helped the most, aside from going through all of the resources from before, is when you're actually in the labs, make the most of your lab time. Go through all of the course materials at least three to four times, especially if you're not super familiar with assembly like I was. Now, this course is most certainly showing its age, especially in 2020, and a lot of the techniques shown in the course aren't directly applicable by today's standards, but you can still look at them as branching off points into their individual topics. So like instead of solely focusing on older buffer overflows, maybe you can use that knowledge to branch into more modern binary exploitation topics, or maybe instead of focusing on the old ways of bypassing antivirus, maybe you can look into new ways on how to bypass antivirus, so on and so forth. So don't let this course just be what it is. I think most appropriately, it should be looked at as a jumping off point into more advanced topics. And I think that's what offensive security intended for it to be. The biggest things I took away from this course were how to do my own research and how to research more effectively. And while going through this course, I also discovered that I'm capable of doing a lot more than I ever thought I was. And for those reasons alone, I would absolutely recommend this course to anybody. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again for joining and we'll see you again in the next video. Where are you going to take the content next? I think we recently just launched, relaunched our PWK, the penetration testing with Kali. 
And so far, the initial response from the community is really, really good. Uh, we have another course that we also need to uh, refresh, you know, make it more modern, have more updated material. Yeah.